Oh, this mini chair is out of control. Okay. Hello, today is a very happy day because it's time for breakfast journal number 10. Okay, it's not happy because my nails need to be painted, but I'm also super happy because I made this behind me. I made this. If you're interested in learning how to make it, watch my most recent video. I will link that down below. Give this video a thumbs up and comment below to let me know if you want to see more breakfast journals and you want it to be a regular thing again. I know I got completely out of the loop and schedule and everything Thing. I just had a lot going on and I needed to kind of recollect myself again and get back on track. So I'm here and there's going to be some drawing, painting, slime making, and just all around fun and balloon popping on these pages. So if you're excited, stay tuned. Also join the family by clicking the red subscribe button if you haven't joined yet and you want to see my videos every single week. It'll let you know if you click that bell icon, it'll notify you. Uh, now without further ado, let's get on into to the wrecking this journal aka if you forgot we make it pretty here let's go <laughs> in a prior installment of my wreck this journal series i worked on this page i actually attached it to my dartboard i just took the page out and thumb tagged it to the dartboard in my apartment and i threw darts at it and i actually hit the bulls i was proud of myself but anyway i only decorated the page with this little dart cut out from the internet and i told you guys it was not nearly done by any means so today i am working on this page and i'm going to finish it for you i ended up taking it to the park and i covered all the pages with plastic wrap that i didn't want to get ruined by the tie-dye in water balloons if you guys have been keeping up with my channel you have seen that i've done Done quite a few tie-dye videos recently and I actually did a tie-dye with water balloons video I will link that below if you haven't seen it and you're interested but I'm just doing the same thing for the book today and I'm taking a water balloon filled with tie-dye and just popping it on the grass next to the book so it splatters and gives a little bit of color to the pages or the page I mean after I was finished, I made sure to clean up all the water balloon pieces and I dabbed the page off with a clean paper towel just so I could transport the book back home and it wouldn't get all ruined. At this point, I know what you're thinking. The page still looks rather boring. Well, at least that's what I'm thinking. So I am going to do a couple little drawings on the bottom. At my work area, I have a snack, which is grapes. I have my phone and I'm playing all my favorite songs from my playlist. And then of course, colored pencils. I'm using Prismacolor, but you could use any kind that you want. Usually when I'm creating, I like to listen to 70s or 80s music and also alternative songs. And one of my new favorite bands that I recently discovered, even though their albums are from quite a few years ago, is Pompeia and their music is so beautiful. If you do need some music recommendations and you're into kind of a chill alternative type song, then check out all their songs on iTunes. I actually purchased four of their albums. Also the Wombats, I recently discovered them as well, but I only have one album from them. Music makes me happy, so I wanted to share my recommendations recommendations with you guys. You can probably tell that I'm drawing heart balloons at the bottom and this actually does have a meaning. It's not just cliche hearts on a page. The balloons are floating up into a dangerous area where they could get popped with darts because a dart game is going on. But no, really, it does mean something to me. It's kind of like a heartbreak page or putting yourself out there and letting your guard down enough to know that, you know, something bad could happen to you, but is it worth the risk, you know? Hopefully you guys follow what I'm saying. I think I did a terrible job at explaining that, but... It made sense in my head. Next, I'm going to move on to this page, which I have done part of this before. In a past video, I painted this really pretty nighttime silhouette with a galaxy sky. And today I'm going to be painting over the warning page and I'm going to do an under the sea theme. And that is where the mermaid crunchy slime is gonna come in. But first, I'm gonna paint the background with light blue acrylic paint and a sponge brush. I applied, I think, three layers of paint on here, two full ones and one kind of like just to cover up any areas that I kind of missed. Let the layers dry in between and then that should cover all of the words underneath. 
While I'm waiting for that last layer to dry, I'm moving on to creating slime. And like I said, I'm doing a crunchy slime. I have never felt a DIY crunchy slime before and I've never made one obviously. So I'm just taking clear school glue and I got this from Michaels. You can get it from many different like office stores, Target, Walmart, but Michaels has a whole slime making section. Anyway, I just dumped the bottle into a bowl and then I added just a little pinch of baking soda. And if you're using borax as your activator, you don't need baking soda, but I'm gonna be using contact solution, so that's why I put it in. Mix it in slowly, and really, if you're gonna be adding a ton of stuff to this, it really doesn't matter how slowly you mix it. The slow mixing is more so to keep bubbles away, but the bubbles are inevitably going to arise because I'm gonna be mixing a lot of stuff into this, but if you let it sit for a few days after, the bubbles should disappear, but then every time you play with it, they'll kind of come back. It seems like every video I have this word that I get stuck on. Right now it's kinda, kinda, kinda. This is going to be kind of, okay, kind I almost said it again. This slime is like an everything bagel, and I actually don't eat those because I am not a fan of onions. Like when I say not a fan of onions, I mean I actually, hate the taste of them unless it's a very very small amount but anyway i am so off topic right now are there any foods that you guys absolutely despise mine are onions and garlic which is very unfortunate for me because most things have those so yeah i'm adding a ton of different kinds of glitter micro marbles some pearlex powder pigment and this is going to make it look a little bit translucent but then if you add too many things in it kind of loses that keep adding things until your heart is content this is so much fun to watch as you mix it i just wanted to keep adding more and more and this does take a lot of stuff so be prepared to dump in a ton of sequins i started moving on to chunky glitter and more fine glitter and then i finally got to the point where I started putting contact solution in and this is going to start turning it into a slime. But when you're making crunchy slime, you don't wanna make it completely workable. You wanna leave it a little bit sticky because the sequins or whatever chunky things you put in need to be able to stick. So make sure that it still sticks to your fingers a little bit so you can add all the sequiny goodness inside. I'm gonna attempt to do a little bit of ASMR. Some of you guys had been asking for it, so here it is. The final thing that I added to this mix were the decorative fillers and those are just clear plastic pellets that you can find usually in the floral or bridal section of a craft store and I think Walmart has it in their crafting section as well. So any kind of plastic beads or glass beads will work to make it crunchy and that is really what's gonna give it the most texture. I specifically decided to create crunchy slime for this video because I knew I wanted a texture that I could stamp on the page and create a watery, wavy, bubbly effect. 
and also I tried to make it look like mermaid scales to fit the theme as well so I used a lot of holographic like iridescent-y colors. Then I'm going to rip out a little chunk from the bowl and I'm going to use it to decorate the page. Make sure to cover all the slime you're not using and put it in some sort of airtight container like this one that I have that has a lid or in a Ziploc bag so it doesn't dry out. Now I'm going to start working on the page and I took white acrylic paint for this and I'm just dabbing the slime into it and I wanted to get a lot of the excess paint off but the first time that I tried to make a mark on the page it actually stuck so make sure that you don't get too much paint off when you're doing this or else the slime will actually stick to the paper so you want that barrier of paint when you are stamping of course. Unfortunately this slime is making a sacrifice for art because it does get all white, it doesn't stay clear anymore or whatever color you're using and the crunchy pieces inside start to fall out. It's not going to remain sticky after the paint mixes with it. So you have to be willing to sacrifice a tiny bit of your slime if you wanna do this project. I also do have an entire painting with slime video that I will link below. I painted some really pretty things in that video, so you should check it out if you haven't seen it. But now after the white painted texture dried completely, I sketched on the outline of a mermaid tail and it was a little bit too dark so that's why I'm going back in and erasing the lines here. I want to make them lighter so when I paint over it I don't have to put as many layers and the pencil line won't show through. I'm using a pearl acrylic paint that I had so it's going to be really shimmery. After I had painted the entire tail in with a paintbrush, I went back in with a sharpie and made an outline around the entire thing. And then I created the mermaid scales on the tail by making some arches basically. And I put lines at the bottom where the fin is. This part was really easy and it didn't really take that long. I chose not to paint because painting these tiny details would have taken forever. The marker was so much easier and I tried colored pencils but they wouldn't draw over the pearl paint. But colored pencils would work over a matte acrylic paint if it doesn't have any of that shimmery shine. Also I added more detail with other colors of pearl paint. I used a little bit of gold which I'm showing here and I did a little bit of a blue, very, very light. I didn't show me painting that on, but there is some in there. I figured it would give it a little bit more dimension. And the page was a little plain, so I also painted a little starfish in the bottom, and I did this the exact same way. I took the gold paint, and then once that was dry, I outlined with a gold metallic Sharpie marker, and I put little dots inside for texture. The final page that I'm showing you all today is the draw fat lines and thin and it also says to push really hard with the pencil but I didn't exactly follow that rule completely. So for this I am doing a kind of zentangle mandala, I don't know what you really want to call it, like a lotus, I, I don't even know. It's a mix between many things, a lotus, a paisley print, and a zentangle, and a mandala, all those things combined I would say. So there's not too much to explain, I drew a sort of teardrop leaf shape and then I added a ton of lines and I did do the fat and thin lines so I did follow that direction. I also added ruffly petals around some of the lines and little tiny dots as well. And you know it's not a Socraftastic video unless Leo McWhiskers pokes his nose in my project. Seriously my cat was rubbing his chin against my camera and moving it and then he decided it would be fun to play with the string lights. He didn't actually ruin anything or break the lights so all is well and he had fun, so that's what matters, right? Cats having fun. So once he decided that was boring, I got back to work and I finished the initial design in the middle with the dark blue, and then I moved on to using different shades of blue. So I moved on to a medium shade here, and here I did three leafy shapes that radiate out from the middle. After that I used a light blue and for this one I did basically the same thing. Just some smaller leafy shapes and I also incorporated swirls into the design and then I outlined the entire thing with the light blue and after that I took a very 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 light blue, a pale blue pencil here 
and I am outlining the entire thing again and this is where I pushed a little bit hard but I didn't push really hard. Finally, I don't know if you can see them or not but I put really small blue dots in the background with that same pale blue pencil. And I think in the future I might add to this design on the other page and do a very similar style of drawing with different colors so maybe an orange fuchsia and purpley color i don't know let me know what you think of that color scheme and what you thought of this video in general i hope to see you back here on friday for a new diy type video and maybe next sunday for another wreck this journal but if not it'll be the sunday after Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know and that'll also help my channel a great deal. It'll help my videos get recommended more. If you have seen lately, since I hadn't been posting twice a week, YouTube had not been recommending my videos very much anymore. So I hope that we get out of this slump again. It seems like it's just a never ending cycle of like ups and downs here. It's a giant scary roller coaster, but I am holding on and we're going to keep going. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you soon in my next video. Goodbye. Fun fact, when I put my shirt on today, I did not put it over my head. I stepped into it and pulled it up. I didn't want to get makeup all over it.